Hello. This video is about running nonlinear list squares in Stata. I already did all this, so I have a bunch of com commands here on, on the left in the review window, so I just want to comment on them. First of all, uh, all variables that I have created here have been dropped. The list of variables is, is empty, and uh, I want to generate a vector of random variables. Before I do that, I need to set the number of observations, and this is the command to set the number of observations, set OBS 100. So we have set the number of observations, it was 0, now it is 100. After this we can generate data, and uh, since we have the number of observations equal to 100, the vector that we ger generate here will be of size 100 by 10. So see, uh, I say here generate data, and actually this can be done from the menu. You go to data, and then create or change data, create new variable. Okay, and here we say the following: we we choose. Uh, if you know this, don't know this command, you can go to create, and there are options. For example, when I want to generate a random vector. It's not in operators, it's not, it's, it is in function, see, random number, okay? And there is a list of various random number generating functions. I choose this one, and there is a description. This returns standard normal Gaussian random variable with mean 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Since I want to have mean of, of 10, here I add 10, and the standard deviation doesn't change because of that. Okay, so if I do like this, I say okay, I have my command here, anything else? No, uh, I can put the variable name, it's data, okay, and then uh, the command has been executed and we have the variable in our list. The next one is the first model that I run, uh, I illustrate in, in Mathematica look at the format of the command. It says NL for nonlinear and then in parentheses data equals something. Data is our dependent variable and what we have after the equal sign is the model. And it, it is important to include here curly braces. The coefficient like beta 1 or beta 2 should be in the curly braces. This is coefficient times data that we have generated to the power and the second coefficient, beta 2, it's the power, okay? Or alternatively, you can do the same if you go to statistics, and nonlinear list squares can be found in this menu, linear, linear models and related, linear models and related, then we go a little down, here, nonlinear list squares, okay? So, uh, the dependent variable is what we have on the left side, it is data, and the substitutable expression, and we have to mod, uh, to create this expression. Okay, so again, you have seen this window before. There are different choices here, like for variables, for example. This is what I have for coefficients. This is what I have. Okay, so I'm not going to repeat all this. Just cancel. And you can see the outcome. Once again, the coefficients should be in curly braces. What else? In addition to what uh, I included here in the right, on the right hand side, we can put variables. Okay, and this is important. Initial values. Uh, if you recall from the explanation that um, we need to provide the initial values, or uh, alternatively the software will use the default values, okay? So right now I want to do it without beta because the the minimum point for the RSS will be unique, so I don't use any special initial values and I say okay, and here is the result, okay? And you can see here that the, the iteration takes only two steps. 
Oh, I, I ran a different model. I'm sorry about that, but, but that's okay. Okay, well, anyway, you can do, if I click this here, uh, you can see that this is the first model that I talk about in my video about Mathematica. Here's the model, okay? And what else? It takes 21 iterations to get to the minimum point, and you can see that the residual sum of squares between this and that iteration, the difference between them between them is very small, okay? And here is the estimated coefficients, both are equal to 1. Uh, R squared again is equal to 1. So, uh, there is another example for the exponential dependence. This is the exponential dependence. And we, we can see the result. The number of uh, iterations is smaller. The coefficients obviously are different. The R squared again is very good. And finally, I want to illustrate what happens if we choose the initial point depending on, uh, on which minimum we, we want to find. Okay? The initial point is, give, is selected like this. If you go to the same menu, statistics, and then nonlinear list squares, and here try to say define beta 1, beta 2, beta 1 is equal to something, beta 2 is equal to something, it will not work because this the program, the software wants a vector of values. Okay, So instead of this, we need to go first to data and then matrices which one I don't remember input matrix by hand okay and here this is how I input it it, it is supposed to be to have two columns if it is a vector it should be one row and two columns so uh, this one uh, this number I don't know how to, to delete it uh, I entered all three numbers and now right now I don't know how to, to delete this one but the program will read only the first line so for beta 1 uh, it assumes the value of 1 for beta 2 again the value of 1 okay so I want to have both betas equal to 5 okay we have defined the matrix input beta and then when we go to nonlinear estimation nonlinear list squares this is my what I call symmetric power model and here I indicate the matrix of the initial values we say OK here is the result and uh, let us just remember the uh, the uh, like uh, beta is equal to 1 and beta 2 is equal to a very small number this is in scientific not notation 10, 10 to the power negative 14 okay now by pressing page up I can pull out previously used commands uh, instead of 5 and 5 I want to use minus 5 and minus 5 okay and then again by pressing page up I want to run this nonlinear list squares again with the chosen beta. You see, there is a big difference. Okay, once again, initially beta 1, in the first run, the beta 1 was equal to 1. Now it is 9. Okay, and beta 2 was a very small number close to 0, and now it is a very large number, minus. 297,265 okay so this illustrates the possibility of obtaining different different values for for the minimizing coefficients and how do you judge which one is better you look at the r squared in the first case the r squared is equal to 1 in the second case it is equal it is close to 0 okay and once again, you can do this only when you can identify all minimum points. And uh, there is one more piece of information that I don't want to do here, is that uh, we can compare the fit and see, we can judge about the uh, those minimum points, that minimizing points that we found, not only by looking at R squared, but also by looking at the fitted values.